Siete. A gift unto your children. How much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good gifts, give good things to them that ask him? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. So are we going to swap now? Do, do we say have anybody that wanted to read from that first row? Or we should just allow them to read the second one? John chapter 10. Okay. So look at that piece. It says, how many of you? So God wanted us to understand how to depend on him as sheep. Don't forget we are considering our position as sheep of his pasture. It says, how many among you will his child come to him and ask? That means you as earthly fathers. And I believe we have some earthly fathers here. If you're a father, can you move your hand? You're a father. Okay. God bless us. So it says, how many of you will your children come to you and says, Father, I need bread. And you look at that child and say, is, is it bread you want? Then give him stone. Look at how you are smiling. That means you will never do that. It says, or oh, the child will come to you and say, Dad, I need fish. Say, is it fish you want? And then you give him serpent. It says, if you being evil with your nature, as human, you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more? Somebody say, how much more? Your heavenly father. We give good gifts, good things to them that ask him. So that means as his sheep, as the sheep of his pasture, one, your posture is, the Lord is my shepherd, like David said, I shall not want. And then from this scripture, we will now say, okay, if I know how to give good gifts to my children, then I can look up to God and trust him. To give me the good things of life. So your daily bread is sure. It says, give us this day our daily bread. God is committed. He's a responsible father. <laughs> is a what? A responsible father. He's committed to taking care of us. The next one, John chapter 10. John chapter 10 from verse 11 to verse 12. Can you see? It says, I am a good shepherd. <laughs> Glory to God. I am, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Hallelujah. But a higher, but a higher, he, higher he, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, mm. sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep Hallelujah. and flee. Hey. And the wolf catch the sheep mm. and scatter them. Hallelujah. Very powerful scripture. Two things from that place. It says, number one, it says, I am the good shepherd. You know, for somebody to praise himself, <laughs> it says, I'm, I'm not an irresponsible father. I am not a bad shepherd, though. It says, I am the good shepherd. And how? What is the measure? Has he proven it, church? Church, please, let's respond. Has he proven it? Yes. Because in that place, it says, the good shepherd. For anybody to claim that title, it says, gives his life. For the sheep. A picture we saw in David. The same way he fought the lion and he fought the bird just to defend a few sheep. He says, but an hireling we see a wolf coming, then he will run away and leave the sheep. But God is saying, your protection is sure. I will never leave you. Why? Because I am a good shepherd. If I've gone all the way to give you my life, I will do everything to defend your life. Can you say amen to that? Amen. I said, can you say amen to that? It says, I am the good shepherd. And still in that place, that means he defends us. It says, but an hireling, somebody that is in there just for what it is, maybe for the profit or the gain, it says, when he sees the wolf coming, he will run away and leave the sheep. It says, but not me. I am the good shepherd. So you can trust God for your protection. You can trust God for provision. You can trust God to shield you from wolves. He will defend you with his life. He says, I am with you to the end of the word. Hallelujah. In 1 Kings chapter 22 and verse 17, what else can we trust the good shepherd to do for us? 1 Kings chapter 22 and verse 17. Okay, we have Proverbs 16, 9. I skip this row. Proverbs 16, 9. Please, I want us to be fast with the scripture. Otherwise, I will just put them up, praise them from here, but I want us to engage. 
Proverbs chapter 16, it's meant for this role, verse 9. Or do you have it there? Okay. Hallelujah. It says, you may make your plan, but God directs your action. In KJV, it says, for a man's heart devises his ways. So you wake up this morning, you say, this week, I'm going to do this. On Wednesday, I'm going to do that. Then, by three months' time, I want to start doing this. It says, a man's heart devises his way. It says, but God orders his step. That is still the good shepherd. He orders his step. Have you found out that it looked as if God interrupted you at some time? You had your plan. This is what I wanted to do. And God will now, you just see that things didn't work that way. You eventually went this way. Later on, in retrospect, you say, oh, this is why <laughs> I found myself here. I was discussing with my brother friend yesterday. And, you know, we, we talked around this. How that he didn't plan to come to Ledbridge. He says everything didn't indicate Ledbridge. But one way or the other, he found himself here, and now he has discovered why. And that is how it works with us. In retrospect, you now say, oh, this is why. Sometimes it's even true unpleasant situation. Maybe a form of delay. You wanted to go this way, and then you look back and say, oh, so this is what God wanted to achieve. He says, a man's heart devised his way, but the Lord orders his step. In my heart of heart, growing up, I wanted to be a medical doctor. But God had a way. Okay, you can continue. You will become a medical doctor. But when it was time, he knew I caught up with me. He says, the Lord orders his steps. The jealousy of God is so much on some people that he will not just allow them to have their way. He will come. <laughs> hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. What else in the next few minutes can we say? Let's look at our own practical examples. What else can you say? What comes to your mind if this is the Lord is your shepherd and you are the sheep of his pasture? What else can we add? We have talked about protection. We have talked about provision. We have talked about shielding us from predators and the islands. We have talked about the father. Okay, First Kings chapter 22 and verse 17. Let's read that. Then I will paraphrase the rest. First Kings 22, 17. Okay. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. That, that was the prophet of the Lord, Micaiah, giving a prophet to the king of Israel. And he says, I see Israel scattered as sheep without shepherd. I want them to return. So that means when you are seeing opportunity or you think you are in a good place, a shepherd is so discerning that he can know that even among that, those green grasses, there is danger. And it can, you know, I see them as sheep. Yeah, the grass over there might be green, but they are without shepherd. I want them to leave immediately. Let them leave the mountain. Let them go and seek safety. The Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus. It suggests to us from Psalm 27 and verse 3, I mean verse 13, Psalm 27 and verse 13, that if the Lord is my shepherd, then I can call to him when life is hard. Yes or yes? I said yes or yes? Yes. In Psalm 27 and verse 13, because of our time, <clears throat> it says, I would have fainted if not because I believed in the salvation of God. I would. I would have given up. But somehow I believed that God is good. Can you say amen? amen. Somehow I believe that God is kind. Can you say amen? amen? Somehow I believe that God is merciful. And I decided to hang on. I said, I would have fainted if not because I believed to see the salvation of the Lord. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 26, you know, Jesus was exhorting them. He said, look at the birds of the air. He says, they do not sow. They do not reap. They do not store in the barns. He says, yet your heavenly father feeds them. He says, are they not even better than you? That means you can trust him. And what is that saying again? It's not about, hmm, our worth is not the works of our hands. Can you say amen? Hey, you didn't get that. You are all that is about you is not your paycheck. Can you say amen to that? Amen. So it says, look at the birds. They don't sow. They don't reap. They don't store. Yet they are sustained. So don't think, ah, it's this thing I'm doing that is sustaining me. God sustains. It says, what do we have that we have not received? <laughs> it says, look at them. I can sustain you. 
And he has proven it over and over again. When he was leading the children of Israel through the desert, remember, he provided manna, provided water from the rock. Look at Elijah, fed by a raven. God is not limited to your paycheck or to the works you are doing. He can sustain you if he leads you. If he asks you today, go and do this and stop working, he can sustain you effortlessly. And that's why he's God. Amen. Let's look at him as the shepherd. You can look to him for help. He says, I will lift up my eyes to the east from where cometh my help. He says, my help cometh from the Lord, the one who makes heaven and the earth. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. In Psalm 43 and verse 5, he says, why are thou disquieted within me, O my soul? Why are thou cast down? He says, hope in the Lord. That's somebody, you know, bringing up his soul. He says, why are thou disquieted within me, O my soul? Hope thou in the Lord. Why thou downcast? The Lord bless us. In Psalm 125 and verse 2, it says, and as the mountains surround Jerusalem, it says, so is the Lord around his people. <laughs> I told you, the shepherd went all the way to lay his life for the sheep. He will do anything to defend you. Just have your faith. Repose your faith in him. It says, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, that is how the Lord is around. And you know that prophet, when the servant was afraid, and says, Lord, see the host, see the host. Say, hey, you don't know the people that are around us. He says, dear God, please let him see. <laughs> How many of us walk with that consciousness? Outside, you can see people with spear, with sword, with everything against you. And the servant beside you say, ha, ah, Lord, we are done today. Hey, prophet, and I didn't want to follow you. So today will be the last day. Ha, ah, my goodness, God, see, see them, see them. He laughed and looked at him and said, you don't, you don't know anything. <laughs> you don't know them that are around us. He says, God, open his eyes, let him, let him just see, just give him a view. And do you know that do, that same way as we move, we are encamped by a host of angels. Can you say amen to that? Every, <laughs> every deployment, every deployment, you might not see them, that, the same way that servant is them until he asks, Lord, open his eyes. Every deployment, the people that want to attack you, they see. It's you that you didn't see. They know is that not the testimony of Satan before God? He says we have built an edge around him. The people that matter, they know. They know the deployment. They know how heavy it is. They don't break the ranks. The Lord will bless us. So God, as our shepherd, is just the same way. As our shepherd, it means it guides us to safety, right? As our shepherd, what else can we say? I have some questions I want us to, to deliberate on. If God is our shepherd, number one, he leads us in the way that we should go in the path of safety. That's John chapter 10 and verse 9. Number two, he says he knows how to care for the needs of the sheep by his grace and he makes provision for them. You can get that from Psalm 84 and verse 11. In Psalm 84 verse 11, he says, the Lord, you are a son and a sheep. You will give grace and glory. He says, no good thing will he be told from them that walk uprightly. What is the meaning of no good thing? It means nothing. As long as it is good. It says, Thou, O oh Lord, you are my son and my sheep. You give grace and you give glory. It says, No good thing will live without work from them that walk uprightly. That is your only responsibility. Walk uprightly. It says, No good thing. Tell your neighbor, say, No good thing. No good thing. In Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21, you know, it says, You will hear a word behind thee. Saying this is the way, walk therein. Do not turn to the left. Do not turn to the right. That means you can trust God for direction. What else can we say? It means that as a shepherd, when we go astray, God will bring us back. And that is what somebody needs to hear this morning. You think, oh, I missed it. I made a mistake. God is angry with me. And then I can continue to go this wrong way. The good shepherd will come after you. He will leave the 99. Are you listening to me? And come after you. He told them himself in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 11. He says, How many of you will have a sheep fall into a pit and will not hold it up and bring it out of that pit? That means no matter the pit in which you have found yourself, God will not leave you there. Can you say amen? He has the jealousy enough to do that. Fall in the pit, he will leave the 99 and come for you. And the last one, just as a shepherd, he brings the flock to shade in terms of scourging sun. You know, in Psalm 90, 91 and verse 4, 
It says, he will cover me with his feather, and other his wing shall I trust. You can trust him when the wind is boisterous, when the weather is ash, he will take you to a place of shade, and that is the sacred place. It says, he that dwells in the secret place of the Lord shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. It says, he will deliver me. The Lord will bless us. I said the Lord will bless us. We have about one minute. Can we take questions? Can we take questions? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Can we take questions? If you don't have questions me, I will give you a question. So, if God is the good shepherd, why do we call our pastors today shepherd? Can somebody in 10 seconds give me the balance? God is the good shepherd. In Hebrews, it says, I am the great shepherd. So, what is the balance? You didn't ask questions, so me, I'm asking you a question. What is the balance? Pastors today are called shepherd. So what is the balance? Please, somebody should bail me out. My time is ticking. I think they are God's representative. They are God's representative. So it is a delegated responsibility. Can we put our hands together for her? So they are under shepherd. They are shepherd under God. God is the chief shepherd. In first place, I call him the chief shepherd. So they are God's representative to us to do those things. They, but they will not still take the place of the good shepherd. Never forget that. Because how many people can pastors sustain the same way God gives us our daily bread, right? So they will never take the place of God, but they are God's representative to us. Can we pray since you don't have any other question? And since you have answered my own question. This song came to my mind as I was preparing for this. I don't know how many of us know it. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead, I will follow. I have made a choice to listen for your voice. Wherever you may lead, I will go. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead, I will follow. I have made a choice to listen for your voice. And wherever you may lead, I will go. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you the praise. We ask that you continue to breathe on this word in our heart and help us to repose our faith in you wholly. In Jesus' precious name. And amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we be on our feet? Can we be on our feet and just and just begin to appreciate this great God who is the shepherd of our soul, the bishop of our soul. Father, we exalt your name. There is none like unto our God the only creator that's not created just exalt him 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 Father we magnify your name 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 Father we thank you in Jesus' name we've prayed. The pastor that but God bless you. You know, when he was talking about Psalm 23, which is where God laid in my heart for us to just pray this morning, I was just smiling. It means that God is set to do something new. Hallelujah. 
Psalm 23 said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But I want to start with the question, so how is it that we are wanting? Praise the Lord. If the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. By the way, the word want in King James is the Hebrew word, chasha, which means I shall not lack, I shall not decrease, I shall not be reduced. And it has to use different verb terms to mean if it's from my own side, I will not reduce. If it's from somebody else, he can reduce me. Praise the Lord. But the key word I'm, I'm pointing out, which is the first prayer we're going to pray, is this. Before a man can say, I shall not want, the Lord has to be his shepherd. Praise the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. Then I shall not want. So if I notice that I'm wanting in any area, it's possible, I can guarantee you the Lord is not the shepherd in that area. And so that's our first prayer this morning. It's a prayer of surrendering to God. We have to ask God this morning that, Lord, be the shepherd of my life. Because see, you, can, you can't ever get better than God will make you. I can never be better than God will make me. That, Lord, make, let me be fully surrendered to you. Let my life be fully surrendered to you. Let my life be fully surrendered to you. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want. So if I'm wanting, it is not because there is somebody somewhere who is responsible for it. No. If the Lord truly is my shepherd, he has made a promise. <laughs> there is no power on earth. He said, if I am your shepherd, he said, you shall not want. I 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 want us to pray. Bible said in the book of Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1. And that's where our second prayer for the last prayer. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 said, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. There are certain things in our life until they die, we'll never see God. There are certain behaviors. There are certain... You can't come before the presence of a holy king and you're having bitterness in your heart. You can't come before the presence of this holy king and there is somebody you have not forgiven. And there is somebody you have been having issue with for the past 10 years, past 15 years. And you come boldly before the king. You, I can guarantee you, the one thing will continue. I want us to ask God this morning, brethren, and say, Father, whatever in me that is hindering the full manifestation of your glory, Father, this morning I surrender it at your feet. I surrender it at your feet. I surrender it at your feet. Brethren, we do not serve a God who accepts a part of us. We serve a God who accepts us in totality and in entirety. Whatever in me that does not align, that, 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 that makes God to be far away from me, that makes me not to experience the full glory of God. And Father, take it away from me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Finally, we are going to pray. In this kingdom, faith is the currency with which humanity interacts with divinity. Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. If a man is coming to God without faith, it's as good as he's wasting his time. That was why Jesus met a man and the man told me, say, Master, please help my unbelief. I know that what you want to do is real, but somehow my faith is not strong enough to carry it. I want us to ask God this man, say, Father, in today's service, increase my faith. Increase my faith. Increase my faith. Increase my faith. That that which has been planned for an eternity for me in today's service, Father, increase my faith to connect to it, to connect to it. To connect to it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We welcome you in our midst this morning. Move in an unusual way. Let every heavy heart be made light. Let every troubled soul receive a call, receive a response from you this morning. In the name of Jesus, as many who are thirsty, Lord, fill them, Lord. As many who are longing to hear from you, open their ears to hear, Lord. As many who are trusting you for one thing or the other, Father, we ask this morning, give them the grace to fully surrender to your Lordship, to fully surrender to your tutelage, Lord. And we have every assurance that with this, Lord, you have all the place and take all the glory. 
We declare this service open in the name of God the Father, the name of God the Son, and the name of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can we have our seat? The Bible says, in the presence of God, there is freedom. Freedom to be yourself. Freedom to lift your hands to your Father. Freedom to tell your Father how you feel. Freedom to experience God. After all, He sent His Son only to set you free from sin and bondage. Freedom is your right. Welcome to the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Freedom House. Hallelujah! Our uh, Freedom House, where are we called this morning? Somebody praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Let us rise up on our feet for the praise and worship. Let's begin to give God praise. Let's begin to give him all the glory, all the honor. He deserves it. He's higher than the highest. He's stronger than the strongest. He's the reason we're standing here today. He's a faithful father. He's been kind. He's been good to us. I don't know about you, but every day, every day, Lord, sh the Lord shows his goodness, his kindness, his faithfulness, his mercy. He pours his love upon us. So let us open up our mouths this morning and say something sweet to him this morning. Hosanna in the highest Let our King be lifted high Oh, 
Lord, you are true. Great fun, the spirit of the deep. Cry out, Catos, to the labor part of the truth. We say, Our voice and begin to say something sweet to this holy God. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns, he reigns, he reigns. He's seated on the highest heavens, he's seated on the highest throne. Come on, say something sweet to God this morning.
Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God that our forefathers depended on and they were not put to shame. Lord, we bless you. Jehovah Ra, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Sikeno, the El Shaddai God, we thank you. The God that is invisible yet is works are visible in our lives. We bless you, Lord. You are trustworthy. You are dependable. You are what relied upon. You do not fail and you do not disappoint. You do not reject. You do not abandon. You do not forsake us. We thank you. We bless you, Lord. Father, please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We just pray this morning, Lord, that whatsoever anybody is trusting you for this morning, please, Lord, meet them at the point of their needs in Jesus' name. And, Lord, whatever you believe for us or believe us for in you, please, Lord, bring them to pass. Thank you, Father, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Good morning, everyone. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. You may be seated. We are all welcome into the presence of the Lord. Just one announcement that uh, we are believing God for. Some times ago, we had a guest minister in this house. His name is the Reverend Tunde Bolanta. And uh, of course, he 
was a miracle service. And uh, by the grace of God, we have invited him to the house again, and he's meant to be with us in the month of May, second Sunday, second weekend in May. It's a miracle service anyway, for that weekend, but we have some we have some issues around him coming because uh, of uh, the new rules and regulations in the church. But meanwhile, he has bought his ticket and is going to be in the city during that weekend. So we hope that the church will be able to host him. I'm just believing God that uh, the miracles that God has started through him in this place will continue. So you can take note of that, but we are still working. We're working towards every other thing that has to be put in place to make sure that uh, he's in this house, a minister in this house. So please, you can mark it in your calendar. Today, I will briefly share from the book of Joel, chapter 2, that we talked about during the work night. You know, the last time when I was sharing, I said that God has a timetable and a calendar for us. So, as a church, of course, or as a preacher, I was behind it. But now, we're about to begin. And uh, it may be a little bit different from the way I used to preach. And uh, I may involve you. In fact, can you help me get maybe one or two microphones available so that you see how I'm able to manage the time? Then I can involve the congregation. But if not, just know, sure, that as we run this series together, we are going to make it uh, participatory. We are going to make it active. God wants to bless all of us. In fact, God has blessed us. But accessing that, I mean, those blessings are some of the things that we all struggle with. But God will help us. Joel chapter 2, verse 19 to 29, the very famous Bible passage that we all know very well about the Almighty God promising that at the latter time, he was going to send rain and he was going to bless his people. In Joel chapter 2 there, he promised, I, I put it, I summarize it that God puts, he promised us three different kind of rain. Three different kind of rain. Said in the former and the latter rain. So I call the former one, the aut- I mean, the autumn and the latter rain, the spring. So if we get in fact, before the rain will come too, he promised them all kinds of things. There will be abundance. There will be abundance to the sense that even your cattle, your animals, they will be well fed. He was just trying to restore the land. In fact, if I may put it this way, you can call the message maybe restoration using the rain. But restoration using the spirit is what I will focus on today. In Joel chapter 2, there that God promised the former and the latter rain. After the former and the latter rain, he now said, I will pour out again the third thing. I will pour out. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So which means that the spirit too will be like rain. Like rain into the land. And if I may ask you, there are many of us in this place who have been born again, baptized with the Spirit of God. We are tongue-talking, speaking in tongues. Believers. And just like the, the autumn, the autumn rain and the spring rains will come, they will refresh the land. There will be harvest. People will rejoice. The same way when the spirit of the almighty God comes into our lives, it should refresh our lives 
and people will come in contact with us to be able to say glory be to God. Glory, glory be to God. But you wonder, in the land where there is, I mean, the presence of the Lord is a Christian land, or many people there are Christian. You wonder why all this kind of attack, backbiting, fighting, is that what the Spirit has come to come and do in our life? No. That is not. Hmm? So, today as we go just quietly, gently, we want to see some of the effect of the Holy Spirit when it comes into our life, after God has already showered us with his Spirit. And I will pick just one today because of time, and I will pick one example too from the Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10, says, For God will give seed to the farmer to plant, and later on good crops to harvest and eat. We give you more and more seed to plant, and we make it grow, so that you can give away more and more fruit from your harvest. It is in the promise of the Lord, it is in the word of the Lord, that whatsoever you are giving out, or whatsoever you are meant to give out, God will, or whatsoever God says you should give out, God has the tendency to be supplying it to make sure that you have it almost all the time to give out. Take, for instance, in 2 Corinthians 9 that I've read to you, verse 10. God can give seed to the farmer, and from the seed, there will be crop. And the crop, of course, will turn to food that people will eat. And then from everything that God has given to the farmer, he will even get more seed again and go back, repeat the same scenario over and over, over and over, over and over. To the point that he will have more than enough to himself. And the Bible says it's not just more than enough to himself. He will be kind enough to even give away. So it will become generous. So, if we can use the physical realm to describe the spiritual realm, what I'm trying to say in all this is that as a result of the Spirit of God in your life or upon your life, like rain, the Spirit of God is meant to change something, to transform something in our lives. We will benefit from it. Our neighbors will benefit from it to the point that as often as we need it, God will be supplying those benefits to us and to our neighbors. Meaning that our lives become a fountain. Fountain. A spring of joy, spring of life. And as I pray last Sunday for you, I pray the same thing again today. That you will not become anything less than what God has for you. You will not produce anything less than what God wants your life to produce. So, let me explain it this way. I don't know how many of us, when we first gave our life to Christ or when we became a Christian, the first thing that usually comes into our life after we become a Christian or we repented of our sin is that we want to serve God. There is this thing in us, the desire, the desire to please God, the desire to serve God, the desire to work with God, desire to do something new. But after a while, the desire become, you know, arrested, that we just drop it. I remember when I was, uh, I mean, my last son, Maybe I can't remember some of the time that uh, the mom will say, the mom will say she want to do something, but she doesn't have enough money, or she didn't have enough money to do it. Then I know the boy will, the boy will say something. Hey, when I have money or when I grow up, I will give you money. You know that kind of heart of kindness. The desire is there, but ask us many boys who have said that when we were young to our mother. 
Ah, when we grow up, we will have money. We will do something for you. <laughs> the first thing that we will remember after then is maybe ourselves. And uh, of course today, our wives or our children. The desire is there. I remember when I first became a Christian, coming from a Muslim background, and then I began to read the Bible, and the Bible was making meaning to me. So I will pick King James Version, I will read it, I will pick NIV. It's the same thing that I read in King James, I will think that if I go to NIV, it will give me, I, will just kept, I just kept on picking different Bible, and reading them, and reading them. The desire was just there. Sometimes I will cry, I will, sh I will, you know, the joy that God, what can I do to please you? I just want to do what, I just want to change, I want to do better for you. What is happening in that moment is that the spirit of the Lord is watering. It's watering his word, watering his presence and intending to transform me. So whether I will now yield to the transformation or I will not yield is another question entirely. Transforming. I remember too the same time when I first became a Christian, I started fasting and praying. I discovered that most of the time when I was fasting, that was when I would be feeling sick. So I kept on asking, praying, God, what is the meaning of this? I didn't know that some of the things that have been deposited in my life that were strangers, or meant to be, you know, they were visitors in my life, but they were not meant for my life. They were just living, getting out gradually and gradually. I didn't understand that until after a while. The first point I'm making now is the desire. Desire to do better, to please God. We want to live a different life. But all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we just find ourselves that we are oscillating between what we desire to do or what God wants us to do and what we choose on our own to do. So, like it is promised in the Bible, Joel chapter 2, 24, 25 to 28 there, that on the latter day, when the third rain comes, I will pour out my spirit, your children will prophesy, some will see vision, some will dreams, they will do all kinds of things. They are very, very good, but that is the top of it. Prophecy, dreams, and all of them, the top of it. But you can't go to school and become a professor the day you enter school. Are you with me? You can't just enroll in school one day, and the day you enroll in school, that is the day you become what? A lecturer or you graduate. You have to go through the process that keep preparing you and preparing you and preparing you to what the intention of God is for your life. So, if we have been given the spirit of the almighty God, and the aim of it for, the, for God is that we will become his, I mean, his representative. To the best that they can think of desire in the land, then we have to go through a process. And that is what we want to talk about today. When you receive the Holy Spirit of God in your life, just like God rains or Paul rains on this, I mean, on the grass. When we retain it, it transforms our lives. Before you become a prophet, there are certain things that the Bible says the Spirit of God will be doing in your life. And the Bible calls it the fruit of the Spirit. I look at them in the Bible, there are so many of them, but there is a Bible passage that gave us nine of them. Nine of them. That when the spirit of the almighty God is in your life, God has put that rain there. There are certain things that you should be seeing, paying attention to them. Then I was looking to how to put it in the local language, define it in such a very simple language. I've not been able to find so much, but the one that I have in the Bible, I think I'm content with it. I'm okay with it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 7. It's talking about the fruit of the Spirit when it comes into our life. When the Spirit of God comes into our lives, it produces a certain fruit. And uh, we are going to put them upstairs. Eh? Please help me project that. When you have the Spirit of God in your life, 
Because I can see today that the majority of us, we speak in tongues. I mean, the way we... <laughs> me, Reverend George was telling me of some people in uh, Portugal. They were in a particular trade. They come to church, they speak in tongues. They speak in tongues, but they are, they, they are, they've not changed their trade. But they speak in tongues. God baptized them with tongues. Put the same way we could see it so many places around us. People who are enriched, they are soaked with the power and the spirit of God. But that spirit is supposed to be bearing certain fruit first. Before we will now become a prophet, we become somebody who can create fissions and do what is it does it supposed to be? The Bible tells us the, f- the fruit, the first fruit is what? Is love. Love. And I want all of us to please do it together. Please look at it. I don't know how to define love, but I know how the Bible has defined it. So if we want to define love now, I can say, okay. The Bible says love is patient. Love is kind. So the definition of love is that when the spirit of God is in your life, and it is meant to be changing, to be transforming something. It means that it will be changing you to be from being an impatient person to become what? Okay. You said so. Okay. So now, help me now. There are about 15 of them in just only the first point that we want to talk about today. Let's go with me. Love is what? Next. Keep going. Your voice is not loud enough. Go back again. Let's begin from the beginning again. question now is this. Please read it to yourself. Which of these am I struggling to do? Or am I struggling with in my life? Let's look at it. If you can see one or two or three or four, whatever, you raise up your hand. If you are good about everything, that's okay too. Eh? If you are good about everything, let me see your hand. Ah, okay. If you are struggling with maybe one or two or whatever, let me see your hand. So, what is the issue? Huh? Because it is meant to do what? To process you. And then the purpose for which God has sent it to achieve it. And when that is achieved, that is where you are producing what? The fruit. The question now is this. Some of us, maybe we'll do it once in a while or we'll do it to our loved one or those who are very close to us. But if I move very close to a particular tree or a mango tree now that God put rain and a water and I want to get something from that tree, would the tree say because I am black, it will not give me mango? Would it say because I am short, it will not give me the mango? Would the tree say because I am a woman, it will not give me the mango? Huh? Or would the tree say, because I come at night, it will not give me the mango? Or because I come at the daytime, it's like, no. So, the question now is this, that why is it that our life resists what the Spirit of God wants to do through us? I will give an example before I will now come back to this. And I will take questions from you. Or your experience, doesn't matter whatever it may be. 
I, I'll try as much as possible to be brief and be short. I have one example in the Bible. Her name is Oroth. An example of somebody that indirectly, we didn't call it, they didn't call it in those days that this lady was baptized with the Holy Spirit or was filled with the Holy Spirit, but she encountered God. She had the word of God. She met the people of God. And she admired their God. And she chose to be serving their God. Then all of a sudden, certain things happened to her. In fact, the best thing that she ever got, aside from knowing God, was that she had, she was married, but she lost the husband. And one would think that that would be the end of our relationship with that family or with God. But no, she stayed with God. That was an example of somebody that God poured his reign upon. And this time around, not for the physical thing, but the spiritual reign. She loved God. She loved God's people. She loved her own destiny. She married to a husband and she lost her husband. Up, I mean, up to the point that she all, almost lost her mother-in-law too because the mother-in-law just wanted her to separate from her and go on her own way. Go and look for her husband elsewhere. She was poor. She wanted a relationship she wanted to marry, but she was rejected. But eventually, when well, she got somebody who married her, she was belittled by the people around her. She was oppressed on all sides. But at the end of it, her life became a testimony. So the question now is this. If you have received the spirit of the Lord, what is the spirit of God helping you to change? In, the, in our workers in training class, a young, I mean, somebody was sharing his own experience why he became a worker, he was working for God. And uh, he said something. He said he became a worker from Winners Church in Nigeria and then working as an usher. He just saw himself as an usher. But from the moment he saw himself as an usher in the church, he would stand in the church and be directing people to their seat. He then left the church. The, that consciousness that he was an usher in the church, he was carrying it everywhere he went. That I have to behave nicely the way I behave to people in the church. I'll behave like that outside too. And everywhere he went, even up to getting to this place, the consciousness is that, come, you are somebody. And this is how you do what? You live your life. And that is somebody accepting what the Spirit of God is about to do to turn their life around, to transform. Transform it. Before prophecy, before big dreams, because we are all, like I taught us last month, people can choose to start from the top and grow down or start from bottom and grow up. Everybody is growing. Those who start from the top and growing down, they are all growing. The only thing is that they are filling the gap that has been empty for so long. How are you growing in the spirit? What are the things that you are facing today that you are challenged with that is ending your Christianity? If I may ask now, if I ask all of us, you know I do it almost every time, ask you to go around and go and shake hands with people. If not because pastor asks you to go and shake hands with some people, how many of us will just approach somebody? And I know of a sister who comes to the church here. She told me several times. She was just looking for somebody who would just come and meet her and say hi. And everybody would not turn to her and just say hi. I said, oh, you are Christian. Christian. You just. She was just waiting. So one day I went there to go and say, I said, Pastor, I don't want to. I just want someone else. <laughs> Maybe you are even the person that is even looking for somebody. Say hi to your neighbor. I want you to say hi to your neighbor. And say it the way, hmm? you will never be anything less. You will never be anything less than what God wants you to be. So, let's go back to my practical, eh? the practical way of, or the way the Bible defines love for us, to us. Can you go back to what the love is. Can you go back? The definition of love, okay? 
Love is one. Let's read it again. So, one Bible passage that I can use here about Ruth demonstrating this in Ruth chapter 4, verse 15. Ruth chapter 4, verse 15. The people in the land describe Ruth as a woman who is seven times, I mean, or better than seven sons. Can you imagine? Ah. <laughs> it's not that she is even like a man, but better seven times than seven sons. So, what was it was that she was persevered. Perseverance. So, now let me now throw it to you. What are you sure? I have a lot of stories that I, will, you know, I can use to illustrate this to you, but because I want to manage time very well, I won't rush. Just want to stay on this one point today. What are some of the areas that you struggle? Or what do you struggle with? Or some of us who have struggled with a particular aspect of it, but... We, we manage to survive it or we manage to change or something happened to us and we are free from it. My aim of this is just to make sure that the word of God actually turn us around. Not that we are just receiving it and keeping it inside our pocket, our jotter, but it turns, transforms our life. When the word of God is able to transform our life, every other thing that we desire on the outside. One example that I can give to you is this. Some years ago, maybe about seven or eight years ago, we were on the west side here. And uh, I was afraid that we didn't have money because I saw this property for years. They call it one point something million. But you know, faith, the word of God is supposed to give what? It says, you no, know, it makes us to be what? To be hopeful. But because we didn't have money, so I said I won't bother to, you know. But one day, I, I, was, I was lifting, uh, what do you call it? Speakers. I was lifting speakers from the vehicle that we used to put uh, all our equipment there. And then myself and my, my, my back just sounded big. For one week, I couldn't go to work. They had to put me on medication. It was then my senses came back to me. We cannot continue to live this way. I have to say, God, please give us a place. That problem changed my orientation. And that was when I began to do what? Run with faith that God is able to. Before we were just praying. We were praying and we did nothing. We did nothing. But that changed my orientation in life. That God can do anything. Now I'm believing God for a house that is bigger than this. Maybe four times. Because of what? It changed. I can continue on and on to give you so many examples. of. It's not only you that we are preaching to. We are preaching to ourselves. It's changing. When I got to this city and I was going to start a church, the first thing that God told me was that the people are not ready. But later on, I discovered that even myself too, I was not ready. Because the orientation that I was bringing was the way we did it over there. Until my orientation changed before I could now say, are you with me? Now, let me now allow maybe one or two people. Is there anything that you have seen? There? Where's my definition, please? Is there anything that you are struggling with there that we can help you? Because the moment you move past the struggle aspect of it, what God promised that he wants to do, he will do it. He will do it. They are all waiting. The blessings are waiting. But it's just waiting for who can do what can attract them with what they are doing. Anybody, some of you raise up your hands when I was, I'll give you maybe a minute or two. Feel free. I'm not going to preach over you. I just want to help us, I mean, get us there gradually and gradually. Some people are laughing or smiling. Anybody that is bold enough to come forward? Okay. Okay. There's one sister here. Do you want, hmm? 
Okay, so to start. Okay. Okay, so we'll start with you. Please be brief as much as possible. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, back home in Nigeria, um, I happen to be in the academic uh, line, and um, it has not been easy for me since I got my first degree. So I thought of progressing, but financially, you know, I was handicapped. So it got to a time that... I just decided that I want to face my family. That's, um, I don't want to go for that. I did my master's, uh, BSc master's, then the page that said I'll drop it. But you know, all the time, each time I just, you know, think about it, what will come to my mind is that the financial issue. But it got to a time, God just showed up. Even when I said in my mind that I don't want to continue because of finance. And that particular year, a grant came up. And I was the first set where two, I was the first person and the other person to get that grant and I started. And from there, God just showed up. But it took me a long time, I mean many years, but I did it. And you know, since then I've you know, learned to you know, lean on God, not to lean on my own and to put my faith in God, not in man. Not looking at the circumstances around me. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Praise the Lord. Um, the spirit of faith, this 15, um, I know it's not easy to go by it. Like this 15, uh, it's not really easy, especially um, enduring through every circumstances. There are some circumstances that come, it just feels as if God is no longer with you. So it's not really easy, mm. but I know that God is with you. Praise the Lord. Well, you are right. Maybe I should now help. I will help us now with what I have on my mind. The Bible says love is patient, and love is the what? Is the fruit of the Spirit. So look at your neighbor. There is patience in you. Look at, say it again. But now ask the question are you bringing it out? Okay. Say it again to your neighbor. There is kindness in you. But ask your neighbor, are you kind? Are you truly kind? <laughs> oh, oh, don't. Because what God is not asking the mango to produce orange. He's not asking the mango to produce pineapple. It is what is inside the mango that God is watering. To come out. So if God says this is inside of you, then it is inside of you. Then move on to the next one. <laughs> Love is not what? Tell your neighbor, you are not you are not a jealous person. Are you? Ah, my goodness. Now move on to the next one. Tell your neighbor, I'm not boastful. Just say it. Can your neighbor defend you through through that you are not boastful? Do you know that? Now move on. I'm not proud. I mean, so if you are not proud, who are you? Then you are a humble person. Tell your neighbor that that is what I am. And watch out for that. Then you can keep on going. Imagine. Imagine. Let's imagine. We are, we are just talking about only one point. Imagine if all of us demonstrate this. There is nobody that will come here into the church. The pastor doesn't need to preach. They will feel you and they will go back and say, thank God, I'm changed. Is it with me? So, if there is going to be a great harvest of souls, it will be a transformation of lifestyle and attitude. And God is willing to do that for you and for me and for the entire church. Just, they've told me that my time is up. But I wish I can go through all of them in detail with you. I will not be in a hurry. This is the greatest breakthrough that you are looking for. Are you with me? I know of many people who won 
millions in America. They got that million, but they did not have what it takes to retain the millions. And the million was gone. Ruth had what it took her to retain this. So it means that when trials and tribulation, like Sister Faith said, there are certain things that when they come, you can tolerate them. But the spirit that is inside of you can tolerate them and turn them around for you. So that the essence of this is that you will not be afraid. You will not be afraid of anything, whether failure or success, because you are prepared. You are prepared. And when, once the poverty knows that you are prepared for it, then it better leave you. When riches know that you are prepared for it, then it better walk with you. God wants to bless you and I, but he wants to prepare us through this process. Let's bow our heads. That God will take you and me through this process safely till we become what he has desired or he has chosen for us to be. I'm going through this process by the special grace of the almighty God. I will be what God wants me to be. I will be nothing less that what his process is doing in my life. And so shall it be. So shall it be. So if you have anything to restitute, if you have anything to, to correct, let the word of God, as it's making you uncomfortable now, what he's trying to do is God is walking through you. When you hear the word and you are uncomfortable, what the word is doing is that it's repairing something. Is repairing something so that eventually you become comfortable with it and then you can get the result, the reward of it. We call it walking through, walking through, walking through is fire. It's exposing you, but it is meant to help you. Talk to the Lord. I pray that the Lord will give you the grace, will give you the strength, it will give you the energy to walk through them and come out. He says, when you walk through fire, I will be with you. When the flood comes, it will not overwhelm you. When this rain comes, it will only transform you. And it will produce the result that God desires out of your life. So may it be in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for this, your children too, who have heard this, your word. The Lord, your word, through your love that you have shed abroad in our heart, will transform our lives on daily basis. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Before I drop the microphone, is anybody today, it's your first time in the house here yeah, to worship with us. I just want to recognize you and pray with you. I saw some people that, you know, they left there. I said, what happened? And some people came in. I said, what happened? They said, it is too Jim Jim inside. <laughs> anybody today is your first Sunday in this house. I just want to recognize you and pray with you. Anyone in there? Anybody? Today is your first Sunday here. Yeah? Oh, nobody. Okay. Those who came in for the first time, I saw them, said uh, the music was heavy. And I thought it was not heavy enough. Praise the Lord. So God bless you. Uh, offering. Praise the Lord. Let's lift up our hands towards our daddy in the Lord. Let's begin to bless the name of the Lord. Every word that has come out of his mouth, the Lord will fulfill. The Lord will bless him. His own love will encompass him like shield. Go ahead and wish him well. Pray that the Lord will continually use him to glorify his name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. As we have prayed, so will the Lord do unto him for us in Jesus' name. It's tight and offering time. Offering time. The time.
is now for God to release his blessing upon our life. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. The Lord gave us express blessing. That when we pay our tithe, he's going to bless us in such a way that the blessing will not just stop with us. It will flow to our family. It will flow to as many as will have contact with us. And when we want to give our offering, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6. He said we should give spiritually. We should give with our whole heart. In other words, before you come out, you are coming to church, you would have prepared your offering. You don't just come to the church and dip your hand and start looking for the lowest denomination. You would have discussed it with the Holy Spirit and you give. In verse 7, he said when you are giving, don't give grudgingly. Give with dancing, with a heart of thanksgiving. And I promise you if you do that continually, you will no lack any good thing in Jesus' name. Why? Hallelujah. Let us be on our feet for the uh, offering, please. Are we ready to praise God? Mercy of the Lord. Mercy of the Lord. Yes, sing mercy, mercy, mercy of the Lord. Mercy, mercy, mercy of the Lord. One more time. Sing mercy, mercy. thank you for the tithe and offering of your people. Lord, we appreciate you. We pray, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, the ability to make wealth, let it be released upon our life today in the name of Jesus. You said it in the book of Isaiah chapter 45 verse 3. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 3. 
You said every hidden riches of the land you will release unto us. Today, by fire, by force, all the riches of this land, as many that are before you this morning, daddy begin to open it up like light in the name of Jesus. Let it radiate in their businesses. Let it radiate in their affairs. From now henceforth, money will begin to serve us. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We soak our offering in the pool of the blood of Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. Hey there, is your child musically talented or do you know of any talented children around you? It's time for them to display their gifts as we bring to you GCG3, God's Children, God Great Gifts Talent Show. This is a Christian talent show dedicated to grooming talented children. There will be loads of fantastic prizes to be won. The winner will go home with a grand prize of $3,000. First runner-up, $1,000. And second runner-up, $500. To register, kindly follow these steps. Visit www.gcg3official.com with a registration fee of $30. Submit a video not more than 90 seconds as auditions are virtual. Submission deadline is Saturday, July 13, 2024. The grand finale takes place on Sunday, August 11, 2024. Your child shouldn't miss this. Grab this opportunity now. Freedom House, praise the Lord. Freedom House, praise the Lord. Are we mourning this morning? Freedom House, praise the Lord. Yeah, now we're talking. I can see the smile on your faces. Hallelujah. So, we just saw the, um, the video that played. If your child is between the ages of uh, 9 to 15, please try and register for them. Like I said last week, we want um, a child from Freedom House to be the winner, which it's never too late. This is your last chance to register. Um, if I had a chance, I would have registered myself. But I'm a vintage now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please, all women should wait after service. All women, please kindly wait after service. Um, because of the youth church, they are waiting in the basement, right? So, all women, please wait immediately after service. And uh, you know what? Next week, Wednesday, I'll see you all. Are you ready to come praise God? Next week, Wednesday, clap for yourself for doing that. <laughs> so that is for our midweek service, which happens every Wednesday. Uh, God will bless you if you join us here to lift up the name of God, and you will be a blessing. Hallelujah. God bless you for joining us on Wednesday. the Lord. I think today we have drunk from the table of grace. Yes. We have drunk from the sanctification. We have drunk from the forgiveness cup. We have drunk from the redemption cup. That is the cup of blessing. And we have drunk from the cup of acceptance if you have done that, let's every one of us shout, Hallelujah! It's time to go home, let us rise. And start to bless God for this great opportunity he has given unto us. For the spirit of God's water 
that he has watered our soul, our mind, our body, and everything that belongs to us. Let us thank God for this. Thank God for this grace that he has watered our life afresh with his Holy Spirit, that his Holy Spirit has overshadowed us and he has released unto us a dwelling fire to burn again. He has given us his powers, his strength to manifest, to dominate and to exploit as we go into this new week. Because we are his witness and his covenant is upon our life. His promise uphold us. Let's thank God for this. We heard in the service that are we growing in the Lord? So definitely the spirit has been, have been, have been released unto us and we have heard his word and his word said will manifest in us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. As you go this week, the Lord will remember you like Noah. The Lord will protect you like Daniel. He will heal you like Namar. He will favor you like Moses. He will prosper you like Isaac. He will anoint you like David. He will answer you like Elijah. He will use you like Paul. And he will intervene in all, in all your affairs like Esther. And he will fight for you like Israelite. So shall it be in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. amen. Say a mighty amen. amen. And shout hallelujah. So shall it be. Go and exploit the world. And no hindrance shall be in your way. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. The next service starts immediately. The next service starts immediately. Thank you.
talking and I'm talking and you can hear, bang, 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 you see. And I saw you talking to them 